Thanks very much. No, that was my lockdown project. I, uh, I bought a, a brilliant vintage American horn, uh, 60 years old, made in Indiana, a con baritone saxophone. It's very noisy, it's very loud, and I started playing it in lockdown, and very strangely, a few days later, my family moved out, and I haven't <laughs> seen them since. No, I'm only kidding. Uh, let me tell you about the, the UK uh, quantum technology program, and particularly, like that last question, where the government comes in and where private uh, funding comes in. This is a picture we started our program with. Now, I know it's a computing uh, a conference, but we decided to, to cover the gamut of technologies, uh, computing, it's very close buddy, um, communication, sensing, including position navigation and timing and imaging. And a lot of these applications share common technologies. So, uh, frankly, use the ecosystem word. We, we were after the same ecosystem. And uh, we had views as to when these technologies would mature. But uh, it really was, when we started our program, uh, 2014 was to answer that why quantum. The answer is a lot of reasons across a lot of technologies. This picture is so well known now that uh, I won't go into the details of our four hubs, but to say that they are hubs and they have spokes. So they've built a community to continue a theme of, um, I think it's about 26 universities involved with those four hubs. Now the picture at the bottom is our, the only real facility we've invested in, the, the National Quantum Computing Center, which worries me now because it looks remarkably similar to the new building going up in Delft as well. So if you use the same architect as we did, don't pay him because he's already done the job, okay? But uh, that building is um, it's out the ground, it's a steel structure, it's gonna be uh, weather tight by Christmas, and that's really gonna be our national lab. Um, and it's, it's already up and running in terms of people, and its job is really quantum readiness. It's working with the technology providers and the potential users to making sure that uh, UK companies are ready to benefit from the great advantages quantum computing can bring. Little note in the corner there, 470 PhDs. We also have been running centers for doctoral training, and we seem to be pretty good at consuming the output of those activities in terms of jobs in the UK, and done a pretty good job of exporting some of them as well. Why spend public money on technology? The challenge, the quantum challenge which I head up is, was one of a group of uh, activities funded uh, as an industrial strategy challenge, we called it. And you'll notice most of them have got, uh, as an emission or a challenge, big, big societal benefits there. The audience of the future was, was for immersive technologies. Healthy aging, the energy revolution, transforming food. And really, the odd one out was, was actually saying one technology. We didn't say what it's going to do. We said it's going to do everything. It's a cross-cutting technology. And we got a rather cautious 20 million of funding for that in the first round, followed by 153 a year later. Uh, it was actually a pilot, that 20 million. It wasn't a pilot. Before we'd barely started, there was more funding. And that shows round about five years ago just how important we were recognizing quantum technologies were becoming. We have a national program, it started in 2014. You've got to think big orange bit, big blue bit, and because this is our secret. Uh, the big blue bit is this, um, the science bit, those hubs. Uh, those four hubs, significant amount of funding, and their job is commercializing the technology, and that work will not stop. I mean, we're not talking about technology which is increasing in TRLs. We are talking about decades of working on the science and bringing it rapidly through to commercialization. So that's where we funded uh, universities to work with companies, and they all worked with companies at a great success. The orange bit, the challenge is where we fund companies to work with universities. So it's big collaborative projects, and th those projects we insist are led by companies. And by big, some of them are 10 million. Uh, we've got 184 million now tied up in those projects. And uh, they're not just building devices and systems and services, they're building a supply chain. And some of the relationships between those players are living on now as those companies grow and expand. Uh, and at the top there, you can see our partners in that program. So it includes the Department of um, Business, uh, Energy and Industrial Strategy, uh, the Ministry of Defense. It includes UK Research and Innovation in its several guises, our national physical labs, and GCHQ, our, our communications agency. So a real cross-government exercise. And uh, we are, in, uh, like several countries, on the brink 
of publishing uh, our quantum strategy, which has been worked out uh, across those government departments. What benefits were we after? Well, as public spenders of taxpayers' money, we, we, we had to say, what benefits will we get? And it's early days, and we weren't saying it's going to be a widget. Uh, but number one has said, we want to encourage further public and private investment, and both at home and foreign, direct foreign investment into the UK. That's our big measure. So again, we're not trying to mature a specific bit of the technology. We're trying to kickstart an economy. And I think we've succeeded in doing that. Uh, we did want to see startups and spin outs, uh, and that's the one we watch uh, uh, carefully. And I think in the past 10 years, the UK and the Netherlands and the US have led in actually creating spin outs. They've been very, very active. Uh, we wanted increased productivity and uh, profitability for users of QT, and to some extent that's yet to be seen, of course. But the good news is we do have users, uh, and we are on the track to seeing that. Uh, a greater market share in the global QT market, I mean, we have to put that in because you have to say we're going to become great at something, um, but boy, you don't really need a greater market share in a market if it's expanding as fast as quantum technology is. Any market share uh, staying the same size is a good reason to invest. Uh, and increased revenue. We're really keen to see not more funding going in alone, but the fact that things are reaching maturity and being sold, and we've seen that. So we've, we've got a directory on our stand here, a telephone book of projects we're funding. But that, that's the, the, the real headline is that we've put in 174 million of funding. We've committed it. It's still being spent uh, on 140 projects, roughly, and 140 companies working in them, about 30 universities and research organizations. Uh, and if I drew a perimeter around those uh, companies, since we started working with them, they have gone on to raise over 400 million now, which is a significant leverage. And that's what gives us a warm feeling that we really are doing the right thing. Um, who's receiving the funding? Just in a sort of order of magnitude, actually, but it, this is kind of our top league. Uh, the Fraunhofer Research Centre for Applied Photonics in, in, in Strathclyde receives a lot of our funding. Why? Because when industry leads these collaborative projects, they go to who knows what they're doing. And, and we were surprised by that, but it's a superb center of expertise. National Physical Labs, um, up there as well. Everyone wants to use their expertise. And then that well-known British company, Toshiba. <laughs> okay, Toshiba Research started in the UK, uh, in Cambridge 20 years ago, uh, and have been leading a superb project there. It's uh, the funding works, but we fund uh, the project and they have to match the funding. Uh, and so we've got a significant investment from them as well. And then some other companies you'll know and are present here today, um, uh, including Rigetti UK, who are running uh, one of our largest projects. Cold Quantiver as well, increasing their footprint in the UK, having raised money recently. Uh, Sam Johnson, our innovation lead, in the room at the moment. He produced this chart and surprised us all, but where that investment's coming from is not where we expected. We thought computing was going to be too risky to actually attract private investments at this stage, and it's off the scale almost. So the big message, you could almost come to the punchline now, is for heaven's sake, governments, recognize the fact that you're going to have to invest in quantum computing, not to make it happen, but to make sure you have some say in what happens. It's totally the opposite from the normal new technology. Sensing and timing is much further down the scale. Um, so I say to our defense people, if you run to imaging and sensing and timing, you're going to have to think about investing because it is still so early that the market opportunities are not being seen and the private investment's not there. But computing well and truly is attracting private investment. So I wanted to, to focus... Um, now, really, and talk a bit more about who's investing and uh, maybe take a slightly different, different angle to the one we normally take. There's a real lesson in, in this first slide. Now, I know it's not about computing, but I would say this is a model which some of the computing companies have got to think about. QLM is a uh, company spun out of um, Bristol. Uh, we funded them. They work very closely with our uh, photonics hub in, in Glasgow. 
hyperspectral imaging, and you can probably sort of make out the pictures at the bottom, but, but, but this camera, which is probably the dullest product I've ever put on a slide, is it looks like the sort of thing you'd see in a parking lot, um, but it actually can see clouds of methane. So one of the most potentially damaging greenhouse gases, it can see if you put these cameras around a chemical plant and you use image recognition, uh, it can actually see what's happening in terms of unwanted emissions. And uh, that, was, uh, that is a product, it's being sold. But the interesting thing is where they have raised their investment. And that was uh, recently uh, Schlumberger as a, as, a, as a lead investor. Oil and gas applications. And the message here is that a lot of quantum technology is not something you say, it's obvious what this does. And, and just push it out the door. It's going to have to meet existing technologies and form a hybrid solution. And that's particularly true in the sensing and imaging world. And the people who understand how you put different technologies together tend to be at the front end. In the, in the defense world, we call them primes, or prime contractors, or integrators. And they hold the secret of how you make that technology useful. And in the case of quantum, it might be that a little quantum goes a long way. In, in the world of computing, it's going to be that a quantum computer working with probably HPCs is going to go a long way. So we've got to do better, I think, generally uh, in this new technology of attracting the interests, not, not of just, just investors, but of those who hold the secret for market access, architectures and product concepts. And these guys, not on the computing side, but take a lesson from QLM. They've done it on the sensing side outstandingly, a very su uh, big success. Um, VCs, we do have VC funding. Here's a couple of companies. One of them's uh, here today, uh, River Lane, Cambridge-based uh, software uh, algorithm company, uh, software company, and as, you, as, as we've heard recurrently over the past few days, knowledgeable of other bits of the stack. Okay, that's absolutely key. Um, but uh, they were uh, started a few years ago. Um, we've, we've sponsored a program which included a, a quantum operating system. Uh, and in terms of supply chain, they're working with everybody because that is indeed their point in the supply chain. Uh, many different hardware platforms. New quantum, much more physical and component-based. It's single photon sources and detectors. And uh, we, we used to, when we, we started our program, uh, people thought they were going to be uh, optical quantum computers and they were going to be other forms. Now, that is still the case in terms of qubits, but just as uh, in the 1980s, if you took the lid off of a computer, you were bombarded by ribbon cables, uh, the quantum computer, no matter what the qubits are, if you take off the lid, light is going to come out because it is still now the, the, the lead contender for how to move entangled states around or share entangled states. So optical wiring, if you like, the ability to create high fidelity uh, single photons, that's new quantum's business. And, and this is, it just happens where they landed on the slide. This, this is uh, Amadeus is the leading BC having backed both of these companies. Um, but uh, we have significant activity in terms of BC investment in the UK. This now is being daring, but you know, the best person you can get to pay for your company uh, right from the start is a customer, uh, far more effective than a funder. And Orca Computing, uh, Optical Computing uh, sold a, 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 a computer to the UK MOD uh, and to uh, the, it, the Computing Centre in Israel, and I think there are a, a couple more in the pipeline there. And then, at a, again, at a component level, Covision, a spin-out of Southampton with its optical waveguide technology, is just creeping along, selling components to people who were either developing or beginning to make these new devices. So uh, uh, this is going to be what accelerates our new uh, technology sector, uh, sales and revenue. And that is going to transform. And we're seeing it happening already, including computers. Now, some may say that that's not a real gated machine, that's an analog machine, it doesn't matter. Um, someone uh, is finding a real use for quantum computing and quantum advantage, if you want to call that, it, it is not going to be demonstrated by a university or a government. It's going to have to come from a company or a user of the technology who says, I've just been able to do something I, I wasn't able to do before. 
Uh, and not just startups, you know, companies growing. Oxford Instruments, famous for its dilution fridges, you know, a key in the, in the cryogenics world, a key player in our programs, growing because of, of quantum. And, and Alter Technology, a packaging company, you know, we, we are seeing silicon and glass in the same packages. We're seeing multiple materials. We're seeing integrated photonics. Um, so there is a silicon story uh, and silicon derivatives, but there's also a, a very complicated story here with quantum in terms of how you're going to get several different material types of different properties uh, into the business of turning microwaves into, in, into photons or, or of, uh, of, of getting silicon surfaces to meet with glass, and we're seeing expertise in those areas. Now, we've also got more traditional projects for Rigetti, full stack. I called Rigetti now the full stack SPAC, only because it rhymes, okay? But uh, that's a, a, a really good mixture of uh, a company, a user, standard chartered, a very, very knowledgeable user. I think finance are in the lead here on users. Oxford Instruments and an outstanding academic uh, establishment who, by the way, are not quantum physicists. If, you, if you're going to build a quantum computer, for heaven's sake, involve someone who knows about a computer which is what the informatics team at Edinburgh do. And that team is making great progress uh, with a, with a sizable machine running in the UK now. And uh, they qualify uh, as part of our program because they are UK based and they're using UK skills. And, and we consider them uh, to, to be a UK company on that basis. And then a really tricky one, which five years ago, I'd have thought we would have seen making much more progress, but it is difficult. And the lead company here is called Quanta, who've been speaking a lot in the past few days. But, but this is the quantum navigator. This is the uh, ability to, uh, with rotation sensors and uh, accelerometers and clocks, be able to navigate uh, in the absence of GNSS signals. Some really good people, including um, BAE Systems uh, in there, the Fraunhofer I've mentioned. Uh, but it is difficult. And uh, there's a lot more investment as needed. I think everyone who's looking at this side is finding it needs investment. And of course, with people who want to be seen to be working in quantum, uh, the, the computing side, most people when they hear the word quantum add a little computer after it in their brains. So we've got quite a job on our hands in the non-computing side of applications to, to, to actually show people the benefits. But of course, the advancement of this technology is going to help the computing world as well. And finally, what the government does, um, and this is what our strategy to be published in the new year is really addressing. And there's a little quote there from a tweet from uh, Rishi Sunak when he was our chancellor last year uh, with a, a particular program. But uh, you know, the job's obvious. First of all, the mainspring which keeps this mechanism running is the science. Uh, it is absolutely fundamental we keep investing. We keep those hub structures. We, have let, we let it evolve in terms of, of the nature of the technologies, but that is absolutely fundamental. And also, it, it's a key part of every aspect of this because it is the science which carries the kudos. Uh, just look how many people have been presenting in the past few days who just can't resist putting up an equation. Well, I'm not going to, you'll be pleased to hear. But um, Accelerating growth, this is an accelerating game. Uh, we call our programs now accelerator programs. This is about uh, taking things which were going to grow and intrinsically, they've got good businesses and ideas which are going somewhere, and we're going to make it happen faster. Uh, it's about people, talents, and skills, fundamentally. Um, a lot of this, we were talking with a company earlier. You, you know, you could almost, uh, all of our quantum uh, computing companies could almost hand each other drawings and parts lists and say, you're welcome to try this because we're finding it really difficult, okay? And in 10 years' time, it, the know-how is going to be key, and know-how walks around on two legs. And that's exactly what we... we so the movement of people, the, the free movement of people is going to determine how quickly this grows on the planet. It really is. Challenges and missions, I've mentioned. That's what I've been running with my team, and, and the idea of saying we're going to get Quantum to do something that's going to continue to feature... Uh, in our program. And then there are some other aspects, you know, the standards and proportionate regulation. They are important. But, you know, we've really got to make sure we've got people trying to do things so that we're not inventing problems for standards and regulation to address. So, you know, I'm trying to keep this head of steam up. And so really, you know, this is our Global Talent Network, la launched a year ago in, in, uh, in San Francisco, amongst other places. But that, that, I think, you know, the right slide to end on is really, if you crack for talent, people 
long-term talent, that means people and careers. Uh, if you crack that, that, then we're going to see quantum moving forward. Thank you very much. Thank you.